So if I told you that there was a business that you didn't have to start, you didn't have to put in five to $10,000 to begin, you didn't have to manage fulfillment, you didn't have to manage dealing with customers, none of that. All you had to do was learn the foundation of how business works to understand mastery of the concept of sales, to turn you into a true entrepreneur and you can make five to $15,000 a month doing it. Would you believe me? Probably not. It sounds too good to be true. And this is the concept of sales and it all starts here with appointment setting. This is literally how I made my first $10,000 a month and scaled well beyond that. You see, your favorite entrepreneur, your favorite influencer is great at sales. They still don't tell you how to do it. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to appointment setting and how to master it. So there are two basic choices we have to setting appointments. We can do it in person, we can do it virtually. I'm gonna teach you in this one how to do it virtually. And now we gotta break this down even further. Regarding setting appointments virtually, there's two basic approaches. And you've heard of the first one, which is cold calling, right? That's where we reach out to prospects who essentially we just scrape their information from the internet. They have no idea who we are, no idea why we're calling. That's one route. The second route is opt-in leads. Opt-in leads is where your company, the business you work for, they run advertisements on social media like Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. People see these, they're like, oh shit, looks kind of interesting. They click on it, they put in their information. Us as appointment setters, we give them a ring to set up an appointment, right? So what we're not gonna cover in this video is cold DM, cold email, all that stuff, because as sales reps like us, it's not the most lucrative opportunity. And I wanna make sure you have the best skills on the market. So over the phone, it provides the most influence. They can hear your voice and you can utilize a majority of your weapons as a sales rep. This is what makes you dangerous, right? And I wanna teach you how to become lethal when it comes to setting appointments over the phone. So the first thing I want you to know is you don't wanna sound like everyone else. We wanna be different. If you're a new rep with little to no experience, your spear, Right, if you're Captain Ahab, the kid, who, the the dude who killed Moby Dick, your spear is you just being different, and I'm going to teach you how to do that. So these people have been called before, but the question is, is how can we be different from most to get different results? Because most people who attempt to set appointments over the phone, they just talk till they're blue in the face, and this strategy just doesn't work. It's how you get a, I know, a swift end to a phone call. So we want to have effective two-way conversations where we invite the correct response. But the question is, is how do we do it, right? This is called framework. So here's the basic framework. And I want to run through this together because in an opportunity where you're dealing with opt-in leads, we're given two basic pieces of information about a prospect. So for those of you who don't know, a prospect is someone that we deem as sales reps to potentially be a good fit for the products and services that we sell. So the information that we are given when they click on this ad and they type in a little bit about themselves is their phone number and their name. This, this is the basic stuff that we get, all right? So let's say our prospect's name is Dan Jones, right? The first part of our framework is as follows right here. It's introduction and rapport. So it's important here because when you dial that number and you call them, they have no idea who you are, no idea why you're calling. Sure, they fill out an ad, but do they expect a call? Probably not. So it's important to realize that this thing called sales resistance is at its peak. It's essentially where their guards up, they're on defense. They're like, is this guy trying to sell me some shit? We want to avoid that feeling. We want to reduce it and we want to try and disarm the prospect. And this is how we go about it. Because this concept right here where their guard's super high, it's called sales resistance. But at the start of a call, people are preoccupied. You got to realize this, dude. You're in the middle of studying right now. You're trying to learn sales. You got your notepad out. You're taking notes, hopefully, right? And you get a call right now. Your mind, your focus is not solely devoted to that call. You are here right now with me. And if you get a phone call, you're going to be like, oh, dude, what the hell is this? I'm busy. Even if you're not in the middle of something, you could be sitting on the couch right now, just doom scrolling TikTok. Regardless, you feel like you're in the middle of something. And this concept is called preoccupation. Now, if we cannot break preoccupations, our phone call is going to last literally no more than 30 seconds. They're just going to hang up. So the question is, is how do we do it? Preoccupation is broken through curiosity. That's the emotion that we want to generate in our prospects when we call them. We want to get them curious. So they're 
engaged, so they're listening to us, and it prolongs the phone call. We can buy time, right? We can't set appointments if the line goes dead. We want to prolong that time frame to keep us in the pocket, right? So breaking preoccupation is a lot more simple than you think because when you call a prospect, we can literally just say their name is a question, like as simple as that sounds. There's no fancy rigmarole thing that you can do. You can literally just say their name as a question. And this eliminates us from sounding like everyone else. And it also makes them curious to not only who's calling them, but more importantly, why? Because earlier we said our prospect's name was Dan. I just want to say his name as a question, right? So I call him. I got his number. Dial it in. Give him a ring. He answers. Dan? I don't want to come off, hey, is this Dan? That's not what I want to do. I just, I want to be simple. And then from here, it's pretty simple because right away, they're going to ask you one thing. They're going to say, you know, who is this? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, who is this? And they're curious now. And this is a good thing. So depending on your offer, this varies. It depends on what you're selling. After they say, yeah, who is this? Or they just say, who is this? We want to give them a brief explanation as to why we're giving them a ring in the first place. So depending on your offer, it varies, but think of it this way. How did you get their information in the first place? That's really what I want you to think about. So let's give you guys an example here. We're gonna use our coaching program, Ivy League Sales, to help illustrate this. So I give Dan a call, I say his name's a question, he asks, who is this, right? So I say, Dan, it's just Nate, getting back to you because I saw yesterday, you filled out a form for ILS to get access to the sales training. Does that ring a bell? And after that, he's going to say, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I remember filling that out. Okay, cool. So from there, I get some form of agreement. All right, he agrees with me. And this is the last piece of our introduction framework. Now, most sales training that you're going to see on the internet, this one, they say, okay, cool, Dan. Um, do you have three to five minutes of your time so I can just give you an explanation as to why I'm calling or is this a terrible time? So I don't like to do that, especially with opt-in leads, guys. They rose their hand. I just want to continue down my framework. And I've, I've never found success with that. So the big takeaway here is at the start of the call, keep it simple, maintain your framework just by asking questions you more than likely know the answer to, you know, using their name, does that ring a bell? Things like this, it, it keeps us in control and now we can move the process forward, right? From here, we move into clarifying. So at this point in the appointment setting process, I wanna know their motivation. Because when they saw that ad, it resonated with them for some reason to put in their information. I want to know what that reason is. Because a basic understanding of sales is solving a prospect's current issues through purchasing the products or services that we sell as sales reps. So I got to understand. I got, I got to find a problem here, guys. So at this point in the call, we already went through our introduction and now we move the call forward. So from here, I want to understand why they gave us their information in the first place and what motivated them to do so. So a simple way to go about this guys is to just ask, right? You know, I can go over this right here. So Dan, what made you take the time out of your day to fill out the form in the first place? Just super simple, right? Or you can also say, I suppose, what caught your attention about that in the first place, right? And he's gonna say things like, oh, you know, I saw X, Y, Z. I saw that, you know, you were helping People with little to no experience like me get started in sales and make $10,000 a month and get out of the nine to five. Stuff like that, right? And then right there, I can actively listen and I get to understand his problem a little bit better. So using questions like this allows them to open up and we get to gather intel here. Most importantly, we start to identify a problem. The whole purpose in this clarifying stage is to find the prospect struggle. Because when the prospect responds, we need to be actively listening so we can better understand the prospect's issues to qualify them to see if they're even a good fit for our products and services. That's the frame that I like to have. So you're going to notice throughout this whole framework, I'm extremely detached. I'm not being this needy sales guy. And to be frank, they probably need this more than I do. And that's the mindset I like to have. So part of the magic in sales is not in your words necessarily. It's in your ears and people overlook listening. People want to be understood. They wanna feel like they're heard. And if I can do that, it's gonna make my sales process 10 times easier and 10 times more effective, right? So by actively listening, I'm gonna repeat some of the main points back to them so they know that we're both on the same page. 
right? So we see eye to eye on this stuff. So when our prospect responds to our questions, we're actively engaged and now I want them to go deeper. The way I want you to think of this, guys, is when you get a response, when I ask the question, so Dan, what made you take the time out of your day to fill out the form in the first place? He's going to give me a superficial response. So think of this like an onion. When I use that first question right here, I am one layer deep into that onion. I need to keep digging deeper to find out his true intentions, to find out his true pain and his true motivation. I want to use their main points and I want to add a follow-up question, right? So when they say, yeah, I mean, I was in a similar spot to you. Here's what I want to say. I say, got it. So when you say you were in a similar spot, what do you mean exactly? And this is going to invite a deeper response, right? So they might say they go even deeper and it helps me begin to clarify the real problem. And the whole purpose of this guys is when a prospect starts to open up, they start to paint the picture of the ugly reality. And once I repeat those key points back to them, they feel the current reality more so, right? Because they're not just saying it to me, but they're hearing what they said from me. And this is important. People overlook this, especially in appointment setting. And dude, this is like 10 levels deep here, bro. You, you would have to pay five grand for this type of shit. And I'm giving you it for free. So right here, it's important to understand and ask how long this has been going on, right? Because when I ask this question, so what made you take the time out of your day to fill out the form? He says, you know, I relate to your story, bro. Like, you know, right now I'm working a nine to five. I don't know what to do. I, I hate what I do. And I just know I don't want to stay on this road any longer than I have to. And, you know, from what I've seen from you, sales seems like the way out. I want to ask him, you know, how long have you felt this way, right? Because it doesn't sound like this is just a decision you, you know, rolled out of bed and chose to pursue. And he's going to go even deeper. And the whole premise of this, when I ask how long has that been happening, is it allows me to make a small transition from identifying the problem that they have now to what they have done to try and fix it, right? So if he says, oh, you know, I've been feeling this way for like nine months, you know, I've been looking into sales for quite some time, I've just... You know, never really acted on it. Imagine it like this. The prospect's current reality is they live on a dark island. There's a ton of rain and there's a little sun. In the distance, the prospect looks out. They see this island that's sunny. People over there are happy. Looks like life's great. They're absolutely crushing it. Think of that sunny island as the results we deliver for our customers, right? Now, this gap between the island that our prospect lives on that absolutely sucks and the island in the distance that looks amazing the bridge to get from where they are now from the island that sucks to the island that looks great is our products and services that's how i want you guys to think of this so at this point i'm actively listening digging deeper i'm finding pain now i want to assess current efforts i want to know what dan has been trying and the results he's been getting there so a good way to ask it is just keep it simple dude so dan you said you were looking for a way you know out of the nine to five for about nine months now so as far as that goes what have you been trying to, you know, make that a reality, right? And the prospect's going to give you some insight onto their previous failures because if they succeeded, they wouldn't be on the phone with you still. They wouldn't be looking for, you know, a way out. So prospects will say things like, you know, I tried X, Y, Z, but that didn't really do much. I did ABC for a little bit, but that didn't work. Now, if they say they haven't done anything, just ask them. I got you. So what's been the reason for that? For not doing anything. Just ask them that. Now, an important thing to do after we assess current efforts is I want to find their goals and I want to make them real, right? So let's just say, you know, I ask him, I said, you know, what have you been doing to try and escape the nine to five, right? And he's like, oh, you know, I tried a social media marketing agency. I've tried growth operating. It's just those, those opportunities really didn't work. I provide a hypothetical solution here. I say, you know, Dan, let's just say they did work what would you be working towards? What, what would be the goal there, if that makes sense? Now, here I provide a hypothetical solution. I ask him, I say, you know, Dan, so let's just say that growth operating or, you know, your social media marketing agency, let's say those businesses did work for you. What would be the goal there? What would be the North Star that Dan's aiming for? And he's going to tell me, right? It could be $10,000 a month. It could be getting out of his hometown, whatever it is. And when I identify goals here, it's extremely important because now I understand where they are, but more importantly, I understand where they want to go. And I've really built that gap. 
It's extremely important to do. So I repeat it back to him. So, you know, you tried X, Y, Z, not much happened. Tried a social media marketing agency, which didn't even work. But what do you feel like was the reason for why it didn't work? You know, why those opportunities didn't get you to $10,000 a month? And at this point, he's probably going to say something like, you know, it was, it was guidance. I didn't have mentorship. You know, it was kind of like a shot in the dark. I felt alone, right? And here, I provide another hypothetical solution. So I say, Dan, you know, let's just say hypothetically, you did have the guidance. You did have a mentor. You had a, you know, a clear path as to how Dan could get to $10,000 a month. Do you feel like, like something like that would help you out? He's going to say, yeah, I just laid that on a silver platter for him to say yes. And realize guys, before I present our solution and set a time, you need to understand this. Our job as appointment setters, is not to close them on the phone. It's not to answer any and all questions. It's to tee up an appointment for the closer to come in and get the job done to collect payment. That's his job, not ours. Right? So from here we transition, we move from clarifying to present solution and set a time. Now I want you to think about this in the most simple way possible. After we clarify, most people overdo it, right? This is the point where most people overdo it. They talk their face off, they lose all engagement in the prospect. And you don't have to tell a prospect every single thing about your products and services, like and, and tell them it's the best thing since sliced bread. Make it simple, don't empty the clip, Keep them curious so they have more of a reason to show up to the call. Because as an appointment setter, dude, you're going to set appointments and they're not going to stick. We need to do everything we can to make sure they do. So at this point, it's extremely straightforward, right? The way I like to think of this is when you call the doctor's office to make an appointment, they don't call you and like sell you on it. Oh, yeah, dude, our doctor's great, man. He's so good at what he does. I mean, it's literally incredible. He doesn't do that. Right when the when the appointment setter at a doctor's office presents the solution, it's extremely simple, and that's how I want you to handle this. So based off what I'm hearing, that could align with what we do here at ILS. So to run you through all the nuts and bolts, I'll set you up with one of our coaches, trainers, specialists, fill in the blank, to give you a more in depth kind of rundown as to how everything looks, just to see if we could even help. So as far as our schedule goes, it's fairly crazy this time of year. The calls aren't some long dragged out process either. It's usually thirty minutes. So we have openings, just checking our schedule, between today and tomorrow. So out of those two, do you have any preference? And then from there, I go another level deeper. So regardless of what they say, regardless of what the prospect says, you're going to have your calendar open as a setter right in front of you, right like the computer in front of me. So since I'm sitting here looking at a time, I just say, so in terms of tomorrow, right? Because you said tomorrow. Do you want to run through it in the morning or the evening? Which one works best for you? Simply pick a time to opening, right? They say morning, cool. 7 p.m. work for you or you want to do a little bit later? So from here, I confirm two times at minimum. So when they say, yeah, that works fine, don't be like everyone else. Oh, cool. Thanks, Dan. I'll see you tomorrow. And hang up the phone, bro. We want to go another level deeper. Cool. So you said 9 p.m., is there any reason why you feel like that might not work? Like anything you can see crazy that might come up? You sure? Cool. So one thing I like to do is act like I'm typing something into my computer, or like into my phone. And I just say this. So sounds good. I'm going to set this up on our end. And I'm sorry, did we, did we say 7 p.m. or 9? You said 9? Okay, cool. And I confirm it once again. And the appointment's rock solid. Like at the end, the closing part, that's the most important. I want to make sure that time is burned into his brain so he understands that, hey, this call, we're going to be here when we're supposed to. I want to make sure you're going to be here as well. And then from there, you just conclude it, right? Sounds good, Dan. So specialists will pop on a call with you at 7 tomorrow. And thanks again. It's been a pleasure. You take care, all right? Hang up the phone. So ladies and gentlemen, that is the basic framework when it comes to setting appointments with opt-in leads. But as always, I will see you in the next one and uh, let's move on to what we can cover next.